Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament lesson that we read is our text. We hear just at the very end when God has stopped Abraham. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Here ends our text, dear Christian friends. Generally, there's always one more, computers. When I started here, we only had those big bulky CPU units there on the floor and we had the separate keyboard and we actually had floppy, floppy disks to, to save things. Ooh, we moved up. We got laptops and then we had the other floppies, you know, that don't flop. Ooh, and then we got more. And if a laptop is too bulky for you, you went to your tablet. If your tablet's too much, you went to your phone. Your phone's too bulky. You got your watch. Here's my bet. The next thing, the computer will be in your glasses right here. There'll be a little speaker right here. And then the lenses, heads up display like a fighter jet. And you'll look at the screen and still look through it. Isn't that fantastic? It'll happen. Write me and say, Dr. Pavla, you are a visionary. There you go. There'll always be one more, unless there's only one and only one. And that's our text, isn't it? Sacrifice, 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 sacrifice. Always one more until it comes down to one. And God says, sacrifice your son, your only son whom you love. How could Abraham do that? It's because Abraham knew there was more to the story and that God didn't end with death. There's more. Let's go see. There is sometimes only one. We can talk about computers and all those things, but let's face it. You drop your phone, it shatters, there's another one. That's easy enough. But sometimes there's only one. My grandfather was a carpenter. This is the square that he used. This is the Stanley block plane that he used. I never knew him. He died four years before I was born. If I were to drop this, break this, by the way, they both work perfectly, and you said, oh, well, Dan, Stanley is still making exactly the same one. Just buy a new one. No. This is the one my grandfather used. There is no other. This is the square my grandfather used. There is no other. There's only one. I can't lose the one. We can relate to that, can't we? If someone would say to you callously, oh, that relationship, don't worry, there's more. There's another one. Oh, that dream you had, don't worry, there'll be another one. Oh, that job you wanted, don't worry, there'll be another one. It's not that easy, is it? To just say, oh, there'll be more, there'll be another. That was the one. That was the person, that was the job, that was the opportunity. And there was only the one. We know how that is. Think of Abraham. Take your son, your only son, whom you love. And there's just that one. Remember Abraham, 100 years old, Sarah, 90 years old when Isaac was born. They'd never had a child together before, and they're not going to have another. This is the one. How could he possibly do it? And we just read that picture of them going up the mountain. Isaac doesn't know what's coming, but Abraham does. They go up that mountain. How could he do that? to his only son. Well, here's the good news. There's something more. Because as Hebrews will tell us in Hebrews chapter 11, Abraham believed that God could raise his son from the dead. Abraham believed there was more. It wasn't ending with death. The last word from God was not done, dead, over, sorry. He believed in the resurrection and that his son would come to life. And so with hope, they went up that mountain. And we know the story. God was faithful, and he's faithful to us. You know, God did three wonderful things for Abraham, and he does those same wonderful things for us when we feel that we're losing that which is unlosable. First of all, God watched. Abraham must have felt terribly alone going up that mountain. Oh, his son is there, but he doesn't know what's going on. All that is in Abraham alone. But God was watching. 
He might not have been seen, he certainly wasn't seen by Abraham, but he watches over us, and he watches us today. We might not see him in our midst, we might not find him around a corner standing literally, but we have the God who watches. Psalm 121 reminds us that God never slumbers, he never sleeps, he's the shade on your right hand. Nothing will strike you, but neither noon or night, he watches. And so that which we don't know is utterly known to him. He watches over us. But it's not just watching. As Abraham is about to plunge the knife into his son, he speaks. Don't stop. What powerful words. And Abraham is stopped. We have a God who not only watches, but who speaks. And this is a wonderful time, isn't it, for us to hear him to hear him over and over, to hear old words that are ever new in times of trouble, to hear him say, I do watch and I do know, and I am the guard on your right side. Psalm 27, remember these words? The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? And then at the very ending, David says, I believe that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, let your heart take courage, wait for the Lord. Isn't this a time when we need to hear those wonderful words? I believe that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You know, God can't say that and then say, oh, but not for you people, not for those people. He says those words and he says them to all of us. Now, what exactly will his good look like? We'll leave that to him. But we certainly can take that verse and remind him of his promise and know that it has to be also for us. I believe that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Well, that's his wonderful promise, his words, and then there's more. And that more, of course, is for Abraham and Isaac, the ram. Oh, look, there's the sacrifice. And so they take it, and the sacrifice takes the place of the son. There's more, and there's more. Because we know the true story that's here is there's more. The true story is a father who takes his utterly innocent son and brings him to a mountain outside of town, and instead of stopping, lets his death happen because he is the Lamb of God. And he has come to be not just more, but to be all. And every sacrifice can be done. The payment is done. God let his son die, pierced by the nails. And there's more. And the more is risen from the dead. Abraham trusted that God would rise, raise Isaac from the dead. Abraham trusted that God's last word is not death, but life. And it happened. And Easter is more than death. Easter is celebration that God's sentences end with life, not death. And those are the sentences we need also. And the trust, it's just as Abraham did, that we have a wonderful, loving God who doesn't end with death and destruction, but gives us hope in his power and his word. And so on all of us, maybe this is a good verse to hear again. And so Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Amen. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's stand to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you sent your son. He is the end of sacrifice. He is all that is needed. You didn't spare him, but you gave him to us. And when death came, yet there was more. While his death paid our debt, his life gives us life. And by that, we have the promises that we will see the goodness of the Lord in this land of the living, and we will wait and take courage for you. 
What be with all the other concerns we have, we think of those who mourn. Retired CUW faculty member Wanda Rotier and her family as her father passed away. And graduate student Adrian Pritchard and her family, her nephew passed away. Be with both of these families and give them your comfort, the warmest and best memories of the lost one, and also the hope and certainty of eternal life to come. We pray for those who are in need of healing. Wayne Vorwerk of maintenance, undergoing foot surgery today. Professor Brian Braymeyer, who's undergoing surgery this morning. Graduate student, nursing student Casey Skrzewski, she's hospitalized at this time. And the neighbor of student Alex Ford, who was injured while cutting down a tree and is in the hospital. Be with all of these and others that we know who need your healing touch. Give them freedom from pain as much as possible, and also why they wait. Give them confidence and trust in you. We pray for Pastor Jonathan Baker, who has been called to serve as campus pastor here at CUW. Give him wisdom as he deliberates that call, be not only with him, but also with his family and the congregations he's serving at this time. And finally, we pray for our school and the community of CUWAA and our leadership, regents, and administrators in light of the challenging times and all the decisions to be made. Guide them rightly and with wisdom to do those things which are best for all in our schools. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, bless you and keep you. The Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>